I'm a senior program officer at International Idea, and I'm in charge in uh, development of International Idea's electoral risk management tool. Uh, that's something that we have been developing uh, um, incrementally for the last last four years. And uh, that's something that we have launched um, last month during the Global Electoral Conference in Korea. Now, I, best, I guess it's best uh, to uh, provide an, an outline of my presentation, so I will look into objectives of the project, I will provide a short overview, speak about impacts, results, show a few examples, and then uh, relate to challenges and impl implications for democracy change. Uh, the best place to start is to look into the phenomenon of election-related violence. Um, for the time given, it may be just important to say that uh, election-related violence is causing suffering and deaths. Um, it uh, destroys communities and infrastructure. For example, uh, post-electoral violence in Kenya in 2008 um, Kenyan Association of, Manufacturer, of Manufacturers estimated that the economy has, economic loss was, was $3.7 billion. Um, also, election-related violence harms people's trust in democratic processes and institutions. Um, there are countries in, in which citizens go through the, 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 the violent cycle during every election, and some of them ask themselves, say, do we really need it? Maybe there is another option. Maybe we can uh, avoid this violence. Uh, so international idea is an intergovernmental organization that is mandated by its 29 member states to support democratic processes and, and institutions. And uh, because of the scale of electoral violence in the world, but especially after uh, Kenyan violence, uh, the Institute decided to invest uh, uh, efforts and resources in developing a tool that will uh, support conduct of peaceful elections. Now, International IDEA develops knowledge resources which are availed as a global public good. And this is obviously our objective with the tool. But unlike the handbooks that we are very known for in the, in the, in the, in, uh, among uh, election practitioners, in which we always try to understand to which extent are those knowledge resources translated in an action. With the electoral risk management tool, we said we really need something which is action-oriented, so a, a handbook will not do. And also, we want to develop things which are sustainable, which will not then depend on the extended donor funds or, or experts uh, who need to come into national context and, 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 and make sure that these things happen. That has influenced tool design. So if you want something which is global public good, you need to make sure that whatever you develop is customizable so it can be fitted into different social contexts. And contexts are quite different from country to country, region to region, and even if you look globally. Action-oriented means bridging a gap between learning and doing. And sustainable, if you want something to be sustainable, you need to design it in a way in which the user, the more it, is, it has been used, the, 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 the user becomes more dependent on, on, on it. And this is what we try to do with electoral risk management tool. So in, in essence, the tool is made of three modules, learn, analyze, and, and act. And this is something that I want to, to have as a highlight of this presentation. Because very often, as I said earlier, we see uh, 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 good knowledge resources which allow stakeholders to learn about the phenomenon. But when it comes to an action, <coughs> translating this new knowledge and putting into an action, we sometimes don't see things happening. On the other hand, we see action. We see stakeholders who take action all the time. But they may not have enough understanding about the phenomenon. right? And also, we see that some learn and take an action, but without situational awareness. And this is where analysis comes to. So there is chronology. If there is organization which already has a good understanding of phenomenon, they have expertise, this tool provides them analytical instruments and also uh, 
action points, or if there are some who, who are you, who are doing uh, or, or who are focused on action, this, this will help them to, 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 to do things better. Now, the trick was to make uh, these three interactive, and we have done it just by packing it into into software into software uh, application. Um, let me explain briefly these three models. So, knowledge resources. How do how do how do users learn about the phenomenon? We have a two guides. We said that there are different factors which can trigger or contribute to triggering election-related violence. These factors can be process-specific triggers, but elections are organized in a wider social context in which there may already be violence, which may spill over into electoral processes. So what we have looked into, we have done a, a, a desk research globally, um, and, and we have mapped 36 factors with empirical cases observable indicators, data collection, and analysis methodologies, and we have brought these two guides. But because we have software application, then these guys have been included in, in the digital libraries of this software application, and then user is given full permissions to change names of factors, descriptions, and, and so on. So they can customize these knowledge resources in a way in which they can eventually print these two guides, which are just specific to their context. Analytical instruments combine uh, databases with, with, uh, with, uh, with the instruments that, that allow geospatial data presentation. So user can upload the data to create color-coded risk maps. If they have data which is in, in numerical form, they can include it in a map, distinguish between the specific administrative region, or they can focus on, on, on incidents and then place static markers, which then each static marker has a pop-up window which provides a narrative, narrative of, of, a, of a incidents. If that is collected throughout a longer period of time, they can just unpack and, and see how, how, uh, how things are changing over time. Finally, prevention and mitigation. So once user has established understanding of phenomenon, they learn how to collect data, they analyze data, they see that the risks are increasing. So what, what then? Well, we have developed a, a guide with 100 comparative action points. And these action points are, looked, are looking into three layers of action. And this is, again, quite a new thing here, to say election-related violence, well, there are organizations who are mandated to, to make sure that election-related violence is prevented and mitigated. But it's not so responsibility of election management or electoral justice uh, organization. There, is, there are security sector agencies who are mandated to provide the support. But in so many contexts around the world, we see civil society organizations who are doing very important work in, 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 in engaging in, in the peace building efforts around, the, around elections. They engage. Um, traditional leaders, faith-based organizations, reputable individuals. There are other state, state organizations which, 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 which help as well. So we look into these three layers throughout eight phases of electoral cycles, of electoral cycle, and then we um, also have an integrated risk and action register which allows users then to understand how these actions are translating in, in the practice, how efficient. What are documented impacts? We piloted this tool in, in, by civil society organizations in Sri Lanka and Colombia. They reported positive impacts. It, was, it improved electoral management in, in Bosnia. It was also piloted by election commission in, 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 uh, in uh, Kenya. And we have uh, internal and external evaluation which says that it contributed to peaceful elections. It is embraced by an IGO, by African Union, ongoing post-launch and way ahead. We have, as you can see now, MAP is populating. We have a number of civil society organizations. We <laughs> have uh, uh, intergovernmental organizations from around the world who are picking up OSCE, ODIR, UN, 
staff in New York, in a mission such in, in Afghanistan, election management bodies in Thailand, Bhutan, Nigeria, Namibia, and, and so on, civil society organizations in Slovakia, South Africa, Mozambique, Kenya, India, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, and we have launched just one, one month ago. This is just to say this is, for example, map from Kenya, used by, by election management body, also Viano Platform for Peace in Bosnia. They have a, a Central Election Commission use the tool to understand the level of confidence in the work of the Central Election Commission by, by, by citizens and by uh, political parties. In Nepal, elections were last week. This is, this is how the tool is used. What are some challenges? I'll fin finish in a minute. Uh, it's, it's a challenge to develop a tool that can fit all context. It is a challenge to bring to bridge a gap between different communities of practice. Perceived costs, people ask me often how much does it cost, what we say is this, you should not see it as a cost, but something which will help you do a better job. And sustainability is always an issue, but we have demonstrated that now it is being institu institutionalized and accepted as an institutional tool by all user organizations. Implications for democracy change. We need all to be better in understanding that there is expertise and capacity in the countries to deal with these issues. What we should do is provide them a tool which will help them improve their methodologies. We should also make sure that there is crossing the borders between the different communities of practice that state institutions are working closely with, with, with civil society organizations. Um, we believe that this will help enhance methodological consistency and it is important to have monitoring and evaluation in mind. This is where I will go back to, to Joseph. Thank you and sorry for, uh, for uh, breaching my, my time.